Hey, what's up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of All Take a Shot at That, the podcast for thinkers, wanderers, and drink and ponderers. I am your host, Matthew Hendershot. Super excited once again to bring you this episode today. I've got a good friend of mine, Vince, in the studio joining me. We're going to hear all about his new EP that he has put out. Uh, but first, I want to let you guys know that if you want more about what's going on with the show, visit shot at that.com. That's where you're going to find all the past episodes, links to all the stuff. That's it. How to email me. What else do you need? Instagram. Inst- yeah, I mean, it's. It, you know how to work Google. I don't have to explain this stuff to you. You guys love this. All right, so uh, let's kick this off. Vince Neck, welcome to the studio, a.k.a. Akela One, which exactly. I, I first said Akela Eins because I, I, I assumed German, but no. <laughs> no. Uh, which I do have a question about. But before we get into all that, you have just put out a brand new EP of music called Negative Nancy. Exactly. Uh Hundred percent self, hundred percent created and yeah. produced, all done during the Corona quarantine. Yeah, last year. Yeah, so really wild story. I can't wait to hear all about it. I, I think we should take a shot at getting this uh, story recorded. Let's do this. All right, man. Cheers. We are drinking. Uh, I, I got this. Um, I got this bottle the other day, bottled and distilled here in Leipzig. This mm. is. Pff, 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 pff. Have you yeah. had this before? Yeah, you're you're a Leipziger so, for, sure. for a long time, right? Yeah, I'm almost a local. Almost seven a local. years living in Leipzig, meaning you're a local Leipzig. Is that is that? I've heard this. It's a so. seven year city. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Somebody told me, and you know, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I that, take that worked. I, take I mean, when I moved to New York City for the first time, people told me that New York was a seven year city. And it, it took me 10 years. So <laughs> I don't I didn't believe them. But I can see a place like Leipzig being a lot more open and friendly. So that's interesting to note. A seven year city, Leipzig. I don't know. You know, don't hmm. don't take me for granted. I'm taking you for uh, an authority figure on the oh, matter. Shit. And so you better be right. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Cheers. Enjoy. Man, we were drinking this on the last episode of the show, too. And it's different from um, regular Feffy, right? It doesn't taste mm-hmm. like... Wh- can you tell me what that other taste that's hiding in there is? I don't know. You it's taste not it, as right? sweet. It's not as sweet. It's definitely not as sweet. It, it's almost like a like a kumel mm-hmm. or like a, mm-hmm. like an anise kind of uh, like licorice almost. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm, my my brain's been going nuts trying to place that flavor. <laughs> I'm I'm super bad with like tasting <laughs> flavors out of something. I think it just takes practice. You just got to do more shots, man. <laughs> we'll get <Deal>. you. <laughs> so, uh, tell me about this EP. Uh, I've listened to it. You sent it to me a couple of times. It's it. How long has it been out? When did it come out? Uh, it came out the second of April. Second of April. So yes. Right there, April Fool's Day, but not. But not, yeah. Yeah. No. I yeah. wanted to p- take it out on, uh, like, put it out on the second, not on the first, because of, like, the April Fool's. And, uh, yeah, no. Always put out the EP on Fridays. Oh, that's yeah. What, that's what I've read. So I'm, I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Always put out EPs on Fridays. I wonder, what, what's the what's the motivation behind that? Um, because um, the chart placement gets restart on Fridays. Oh. So they start counting on Fridays. And I was like, yeah, you know, maybe <laughs> I, I I didn't, you know, I didn't believe it would be like a first uh, chart uh, uh, EP or something, you know, but... Did it? Would, nah. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Spotify top 10? Anything? No, 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 no. 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 <laughs> so, but but this has been a long time coming for you. You you explained to me that these songs are, are actually quite old. Yeah, they're super old. They I started off this EP, actually, this EP wasn't, uh, it wasn't, uh, what's it called? It wasn't meant to be recorded and released because mm. uh, in the beginning I was just playing around with the guitar and I like to, you know, play around with um, picking patterns. Okay. And uh, yeah, I kind of like just practiced and during practice I, w- I came up with some ideas, wrote some songs and it was basically just for me. And uh, I played it to to some friends and one friend said, hey, you know, you should record this. Yeah. And I was like, okay. If people would like this, you know, I'm, I'm going to record it. But then I'm not going to do like a classical guitar stuff. Okay. Because I'm not. Oh, is that you wrote these things on yeah. classical guitar? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Oh, okay. Because the yeah. album is not no, classical no, at guitar all. music at all. No. <laughs> 
But I took the, those ideas and rearranged it and, you know, put some synthesizers on it, played some bass and some drums and stuff, wrote some lyrics. And uh, I wrote all this all these songs during um, a time where my mental health wasn't as good as it was is now. Mm. Uh, meaning I was suffering from depression and this was like my kind of way to express how I feel because I'm not a big fan of, or like I wasn't a big fan of talking about feelings. Okay. So this was my way to release all this all right all right yeah and, and so when when was that when was that all going on uh, it was like it started around like two, 2016 oh wow okay yeah and yeah i took therapy and during therapy i wrote some lyrics and stuff and i felt better and better and you know when i when you go through depression you go through different stages, you know, like mm. sometimes you are so down, you cannot ge even get up from bed, you know, and this is <laughs> yeah. like something which kind of like pulled me back to, or like uh, helped me back to, uh, from recording this because I, I didn't have the energy to record this, you know, I, oh, I know okay, yeah. recording takes a lot of energy and work and yeah, this was something, yeah, that helped me back and, um, the time it get better, I was more motivated because I, I kind of like challenged myself those years ago. And I was like, it's, it was on my bucket list, very on the very top. And mm. I was like, okay, 2020 is going to be the year I'm going to record this. And then Corona came, <laughs> you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> Corona, big plans. Yes, big plans. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm not going on tour with as a sound engineer, so I can be in my studio and record stuff. So, yeah, you know? Corona actually gave me some time off. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Well, and you you touched on an interesting point there in saying that you couldn't go on tour or get jobs uh, doing your work because you work regularly yeah. as an audio engineer for exactly. live events mostly, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and then that led you with this album into doing all the work yourself, not only from the technical side, but also playing all of the instruments and yeah. recording it and mixing it. and. Mm -hmm. That's a lot to take on for one person. Yeah, it is. I mean, the thing is, I'm not a guitarist. I didn't take lessons or anything. And I was like, ah, should I, you know, ask someone who can play this? Or should I just practice and play it myself? You know, challenging, you know? Mm, yeah. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do it this way. And then I was like, okay, I don't sing, you know? And I was looking for someone who could sing this. And then I was like, ah, no, man, I cannot let someone else sing my songs because these lyrics are very personal, you know? Sure. So I cannot let anyone else sing it. And I was like, okay, you know, screw it. I'm going to do everything myself then. Huh. And yeah, this is, uh, it was challenging and I, it took some time to do this because, you know, when you are a band, you know, there's someone who's playing drums, someone who's playing guitar and they have their own sound and i have to actually i could i had to find the, the sound of my instruments first before yeah. i was recording it and it's it took me i could say three four months to be satisfied with the sound and uh, <laughs> i was very um blue-eyed in the beginning because i was like okay two months i'm going to record it and release it and then it <laughs> took me at least like two months to find a sound. Wait, your original budget amount of the time yes. was was two months? <laughs> yes. Because I thought like, okay, <laughs> the songs are ready, you know, I, they're already written. I just have to record it. But right. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, uh, I'll ask that question. That makes a lot of sense. How much do you feel the songs changed from the way that they were written to how they were recorded? We've already talked about the mm -hmm. fact that you wrote them or a majority of them on a classical guitar. Mm -hmm. This is obviously much more than that. Um, but in what ways have the songs themselves changed, do you think? Uh, it changed from, from I, I started off with like putting more and more layers of instruments and stuff. And in the, in the end, it was so much that I had to delete some stuff. Oh so, man, I love deleting stuff in the mix, <laughs> man. Oh. I was like, what's this? What's this? A cello? Yes. No. Fuck that cello. Yeah. It's gone. <laughs> it's Who gone. Who needs that? <laughs> I love yeah. cello players, don't get me wrong, but mm -hmm. that track had to go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it, it was hard because, you know, I was 
I was happy and excited for every part of the songs and every part of the instrument because I, you know, I like, I'm the sound engineer. I'm doing sound. So when I fiddle around with my synthesizer, you know, and I end up recording it, I like this. Yeah. But then, you know, listening to, I don't, I don't know, a lot of tracks and then it's like, ah, that's too much. Like it's clouding my mix. It's clouding mm. everything. It's, it's just too much. You didn't... Um... <clears throat> For me, I, from my personal experiences, anytime that I've tried to self-produce or self-record, especially in the music, well, it's exclusively in the music as I'm talking about it right now, but uh, I have always struggled to have a hard time separating my mind from the audio engineer mind to the artist mind uh, and, and instrumentalist mind. And like, I'll be playing guitar, but thinking about tone mm -hmm. instead of technique. Mm -hmm. uh, did you struggle to kind of compartmentalize that stuff? How much were you in your head, like, like hitting record, hitting stop, hitting record, hitting stop, instead of just like letting it roll and actually playing guitar or stuff like that? I practiced um, my takes. Like I, when I practiced the songs, I recorded them. So if I would be like, if I would go into the recording session, it would be practice for me. So I didn't thought it, think about all this stuff. Wait, what do you mean by that? How did you, how did you record this? Did you just like hit, like set up a loop? Yeah, yeah. And I, hit it play and then just record this, practice the song over and over and stack yes. up tracks? Is that the... Yeah, basically. I deleted stack takes? Is yeah, that? yeah, I deleted the takes after, but I was like, if I practice and it would be a perfect take... Then I couldn't, you know, keep it if I don't record oh, it. Oh, that's really smart. So I recorded a lot of stuff do, uh, through the iBox, not an amp. Okay, And yeah. then I <laughs> I cheated a little bit. And that's then not I, cheating. Yeah, okay. Hold it's, on. It, tell me, you record in, uh, via DI into the box and mm -hmm. then uh, reamp it, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's not cheating. You okay. played it and it's an amp. That's totally <laughs> valid, man. Okay. Don't call that cheating. <laughs> Own that. That's good science. Okay. So, yeah, that's, you know... Do you want another drink? Sure. Yeah, bring it over. So yeah, all right. I didn't have to go through all the stages of like ah, you know, and and I set up my studio for for myself, and that was a big part for me um, to like what I learned during the production is that workflow is key. Oh, <laughs> so <laughs> I set up my studio so I could hear just that? interns of the world. Yes, I could just go in, and I felt like. Recording drums, I sat down on the drums, played some takes, done. You know, and that, that's fun because I don't want to, you know, go in the studio every time, set up the microphones, gain stage, everything. Well, it takes you out of it, doesn't yes, it? Yes, exactly. I wanted to go in and feel and record what I feel. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, real good. I want to take a listen to a song if we can at this point. Um, and I think the song that we'll play first uh, is a song titled Rotten Butterflies. Do you want to give me like a couple of sentences here before mm -hmm. we play the song to let people know what they're getting themselves into? Sure. So Rotten Butterflies is basically about the lowest low I've experienced. And that was that I had like suicidal thoughts and it was not like I could, I could do it but I like wished for it. So for mm. example, it starts off with like, why can't the rain be acid? It's like, why can't I just like, let's put it this, why can't I just die? Mm. You know, and not like be my, like um, my, what's it called? Um, I didn't choose to do this, you know? Mm. And it's like about like this mental exhaustion and about like the question, if you can feel happy again at some point. And um, yeah, I, I kind of like, I felt that I lost all the happiness and the butterflies in your bellies, you know, they are dead. So mm -hmm. they're rotten. So this is why it's rotten butterflies. And I put it out as a single and uh, I was struggling to find a good single. And my roommate actually chose it for me because she said, it sums up um, the EP, like the vibe, but it's not as experimental and as crazy as the other songs. Hmm, okay. So, Well, let's find out. Let's take a listen to Rotten Butterflies.
how is it for you uh, now that the, the album's out to hear the music? And I mean that in the way of obviously we're dealing with, you know, sensitive subject matter for you, but then also, you know, to experience the work you've put in, the efforts you've put in, which honestly are in, in kind of a stark contrast to, to work so hard to create something that reflects on something so dismal in a way. Mm -hmm. I hate to put it that way, mm -hmm. but how does it wash over you now when you hear your own music played back? Uh, I'm very happy, actually. It, it's it's happy because I closed that chapter, you know? Yeah. It was, um, now I can look back and I can realize how I really felt. And this is like, it captures how I felt. And, you know, I I like my music. <laughs> Otherwise, I, I don't produce what I don't like. So I just, you know, I do what I like. Mm. And when I listen back to it, it's like, I'm proud of it. I'm really proud and it's fun to listen to it because I can, um, you know, experience some stuff which is over now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So kind of look at it through the the lens of time with a different perspective. Yeah. Oh, very cool. I, it, I have another question, which is I can't help but notice that it's in English. Yeah. Why not German? I don't know. I don't. I find it very hard to write German lyrics. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's just like it's everything in German for me sounds so so flat. You know what I mean? It's not like deep enough. And German is such a hard language where English is more like a. It flows better. Um. And. I don't know. It's just I, I my kind, person, no, person, no, no. I, I, personal I'm, taste. It's, I'm always curious about it, right? Because like I met, uh, for instance, I met a guy who was a, a singer for a band and uh, he sang in English mm -hmm. uh, and he, he spoke French. Mm -hmm. His native language was French. And I, I had to ask him, I'm like, why are you singing in English? And he had a very pragmatic answer about, well, that's the market, right? Like I'm trying to sell songs. So I have to do it in English so that I can sell songs in America because... You know, France doesn't buy CDs. I don't <laughs> even know. But then it, to something like that, of if if that were true, where we're just going for the most sort of fluid and artistic sounding, like we would all be singing in French, not not even <laughs> English at that point, because it's a beautiful language. Of course, but, but German's also a beautiful language. Yeah, yeah, but it's different, I think, because for me, for when we say for, okay, cheers. Let's by do, the way, yeah, <laughs> cheers. Sorry, first, <laughs> yeah, so. French for me is a very is more, even more fluid than English, mm -hmm. but in a musical context, it's just too fluent. It's just too soft. Where German is too hard. Okay, and English is right in the in the middle of it. You know, it's it's smooth, but it's also you can you have some, uh, yeah, hard sounds and also very smooth sounds, hmm. and. I don't know. I like the tone of the language and I like that there are a lot of words which just sounds good. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Hey, it's, if it works for you, it works it, for you. Yeah. <laughs> There's no right or wrong answers. You know, it's just I'm always curious as to why. Uh, I always find like, okay, I'm learning to speak German, but if I really needed to express myself, I would have to go back to my native language. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm always curious as to people, uh, as to the, motivations for people who can express themselves in a language that they don't own as a mother tongue. So that's really curious. Yeah. And I think, you know, when you listen to German music, the thing is that we like here in Germany, we listen to a lot of English music and a lot of German music. And when you listen to English music, you don't really listen to the lyrics or I, I, I don't think that a lot of people listen to the lyrics that okay. much. Plus uh, when it, when it's German, it's just, I cannot explain it. It's just like everybody understands what you're singing and it had like they they start to criticize or like I would say they start to criticize uh what you're singing basically. I don't know. Huh. I don't know. <laughs> That's I don't know. interesting. I don't know how to put it, but in my experience um they start to um yeah, I don't know how to put it actually. 
It's hard to to explain. Do you think it has anything to do with like the literal yeah. nature of the language? Because Germans are very, in many ways, it's a very literal language. You you say, you know, handschuhe, the shoe mm-hmm. for your hand instead of glove or something like yeah. that. Do you think that that is part of that when they're, they're just like so used to being literal that using metaphor in German or, or, no, or because something like that in songs is not quite understood? Or I think in German you can use a lot of words and uh, ha- even build better metaphors. Okay. Or be a little bit more, um, a little bit more um, poetic. Okay. But... It's harder to do. It's harder to it's do. Ha- it's harder to do. Okay. You know, it sounds, it's, uh, it doesn't sound as deep when you're like, let's say I would sing everything, would I say, <laughs> sing in English, uh, I would sing in German, it would be a little bit not deep enough, I would say. Not deep enough. Okay. You know? Uh, yeah, I, I kind of do know. <laughs> I kind of understand. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know. It's just my personal taste too, though. To, to, okay, very fair, very fair. To spin <laughs> off of that, and I know, I know, it's like uh, I think it was Kurt Vonnegut that said, like, to talk about music is to dance about architecture. But mm-hmm. um, it, it, can you talk about the music itself? Like, I tried to diplomatically, or I was going to in the introduction, diplomatically call it like an indie record, but mm-hmm. that's not really it. No, <laughs> and it does have some. It does have some electronic stuff in it some synth stuff in it but it's not an electronic record yeah um it does have a bit of i mean and i hope that this isn't stereotyping but it does have a bit of like german in it Mm -hmm. i can definitely tell because i'm like it kind of feels like berlin in the 80s at times with Mm -hmm. some of the some of the pumping beat kind of vibe like how do you uh describe if i ask you like you tell me oh i got this new ep and i do the radio announcer well, oh what genre of music do you play yeah like, I, <laughs> how do you ex- answer a question like that it's hard for me to put it in a genre like you said there is like some so much different it's a fusion of genres yeah you know and i always say like p- like bands like radiohead nine inch nails and massive attack they inspired me. Okay. So this is something which I would say it's art rock if you want to have a genre, but it's, you know, or like, yeah, it's hard to put it down in like one genre. All right. But it has some heavy guitars in it. It has, yeah. it's a, it's slow. So it's not like punk rock or metal, but it's slower. It has for me, it has some grunge vibes in some songs but also, like you said, some 80s vibes, like wave music. Yeah. A lot of people uh, said about Rotten Butterflies that it reminds them of The Cure. Okay. And I was like, oh, that's good. Yeah, sure. And also, uh, some people say like, ah, you know, I can hear you were listening to Radiohead when you were write, wrote, writing that song. And okay. that's also true. Also. <laughs> so, yeah, if you want, I cannot answer the question about like the genre. Yeah, but yeah. Inspiring people were definitely uh tom york from radiohead and bands like nine inch nails yeah cool i think triangulation uh where it's like oh it's it's this meets this meets this it Mm kind of became an easy way to describe music yeah it's not very fair to music because it's it's obviously much more uh developed and diverse than just like three sources of input or whatever but that i think that that's that's pretty fair assessment of all that stuff yeah i wanted to ask you something about the production because you received if i understand correctly a bit of financial help in the production as well yes i applied for a scholarship at kulturstiftung des freistaates sachsen that's easy for you to say yeah that's easy for me to say (laughs) wait no say it again that's art something of the free state of saxony yeah kulturstiftung des freistaates Sachsen. so culture yes and they put out a um scholarship like where you basically um can tell them what you do during the lockdown and they give you some financial um, support. And I was like, okay, if they give me this uh, scholarship, I am going to um, press some vinyls and uh, I'm going to, you know, use the money for, you know, production and um, promotion purposes. Yeah. And since I'm doing this all by myself, the production costs were very low. So I can afford to 
press vinyls, which are coming out this summer. Ooh, mm-hmm. seven inch? Uh, no, 12 inch. 12 uh, inch. 180 gram. And it's, um, I chose a echo um, press, which are um, the rests of the um, color palettes. Yeah. So, you know, you can press some vinyls in green and yellow and yeah. whatever. And so um, all the rests, they collect it and they press it into like my, my vinyl as an echo. So right. it's not black, but every... Yeah, multicolor. It's multicolor and every, um, every vinyl is going to be unique. Yeah. So it's not like maybe it's going to be black and blue and the next one is going to be red and white and yeah. That's cool. We'll see. That's fun to do. And that's a really cool way to to also contribute to some eco, eco-friendly and sustainable practices, right? right? <laughs> but but I, I'm, I got to ask, and maybe this is going to be a, a comp, like a tech-related question, but you and I are, are kind of nerdy about it. The, mm-hmm. the EP is only 25 minutes long. A 12 yeah. inch is like way too long for that. Are you doing some sort of like... It's, is, is it printed at 33 or yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's slow ah. it's slow so high quality vinyl <laughs> wow okay now that's cool then all right so deep cut exactly. slow cut um 33 rpm speed yes instead of and 180 grams so okay yeah cool yeah i'm excited i haven't had i didn't receive the test press yet but that was a goal which I wanted to do. I wanted to master for vinyl, and it's my first attempt for oh. vi- mastering for vinyl. How was that? Yeah. Uh, a lot of reading. <laughs> yeah, and I had a friend who was master, who was a master engineer, and he uh, did some um, masters for vinyl. And I asked him if we can take a listen. What's the secret? What's the secret? What's the trick? Uh, I don't know if there's a secret. I don't know if I did it good. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> but he said it's Minus going to two be, dB everything above six k. Yeah, Let's go. <laughs> he said like okay, I don't. don't know if it's true. <laughs> don't put don't put a limiter on it and just try to achieve loudness. Yeah. for like with a multiband compressor. Yeah, for don't cut it too loud. Um, yeah, put it put everything in mono, uh, everything below two or like three hundred hertz. Yeah, and cut off the high frequencies, and that's basically what I did. Yeah, I that, didn't do any um ex, uh, uh, any saturation because you know. Yeah, you don't we want don't need you, it. You don't want any of that extra yeah. stuff in there. You kind of strip it all away and and do the less. And I I love tapping zero instead of having a limiter to push everything up there. That's a really great vinyl trick. That yeah, that's what volume knobs on exactly. stereo systems are exactly. for. Like if it's too quiet, turn it the fuck yeah, up. You exactly. Get off your butt. <laughs> uh, I don't like people who are like judge music. It's not loud enough it's not loud enough we went through the loudness wars guess what yeah. reasonable volumes won Woo, exactly victory um let's play another tune okay uh and then i want to ask you something about uh what you touched on a little bit the promotion and um and the long tail of this after the fact because there's some very interesting things to talk about in the realms of artwork that go along with mm-hmm. the EP. But first, let's talk uh, briefly, explain to me what people will hear. Let's, the next song we're going to play is called Purpose of a Grave. I love this title, by the nice. way. It's <laughs> really like, uh, I know what we're getting into here. Yeah, yeah. Um, but tell me a little bit about this song so that uh, get people cued in of what they should pay attention to as we play this back. Yeah, it's basically about a relationship which is definitely going to end, like this is not going to come back. And it kind of like, when I thought about it, I was like, okay, you know, it's like basically like we are burying this love and the purpose of a grave is that it stays buried and it's not going to get digged up again. Mm. But of course, you know, some people come back to the grave and reminisce about the old day, uh, old good, good old days and uh you know wish that the person or like let's say now the love comes back and some people you know they like the clean cut and they want to forget to not get hurt again so this is what the song is about actually wild all right well everybody enjoy or reminisce or get thoughtful or do whatever you do because music speaks to everybody in a different way but here is purpose of a grave
as we uh, as we listen to that song, it reminded me of um, the chain. Yeah, uh, good <laughs> Fleetwood Mac. It's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's true. In what way? What do you mean that's true? Uh, because it's it's the the chorus. I I kind of like stole the chorus actually. Oh no! <laughs> I don't think he stole. Yeah, yeah. Great artists borrow; they don't steal. Oh yeah, yeah. I borrowed it. Yeah, yeah. But it's true because uh, it's it's one of my favorite songs of Fleetwood and Mac, and I always listen to it when I'm on a plane or something. It's my taking off song. Okay, actually. I love to listen to it when the plane takes off because wow. it's so mellow in the beginning, and then you know, in the end, it's like starts to be rocking. And that's fun. I, 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 I knew I was going to drop that in there about this song. I had no idea that that was going to be the reaction. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I love, you that know. That deserves a drink. That okay, is, okay. Wait, where's my drink? Here there you go. go. Cheers. Uh, mm. Yeah, but um, I, li- I like, um, like I listen to a lot of hip hop stuff too. And hip hop artists, they uh, they do this. They borrow lines oh, and yeah. they use it in a different context. And in the beginning, I was like, "Ah, you stole it," you know. <laughs> and <laughs> and it's actually I love this that somebody. It's like it's like sampling music, you know. Yeah. You take it and you make something new off it. And um, matter of fact, I also borrowed um, some lyrics in um, Virus. Okay. In the song Virus, I sing, uh, um, please push me because I'm close to the edge. I think I'm tr- uh, I think I'm losing my head. Oh, and, that's, you know, don't push me. Yeah, exactly. Close, I'm, I'm close, close to the, the edge. Yeah, and that, that right there was enough for us to get copyright sued, so we're not going to go yeah. into that. Oh. Definitely, <laughs> grand, Dan, definitely Grandmaster Flash. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I like all that stuff. That's yeah. great. That's amazing that that uh, that that jumped out at me in the way that it did. Yeah, I want to jump back in time a little bit in this conversation, and you talked about saving up some money for um, the sort of uh, publication, the promotion, the, the pressing of vinyl, and, and all this stuff. And uh, that I want to ask about the artwork yeah. because there is some curious artwork, uh, not only just for like the packaging mm-hmm. of the of the physical material. But in pulling it up on Spotify, there's like music videos. Yeah, it's like a short loop playing. It's uh, the Spotify canvas. And my good friend, Annalena Epp, uh, she did all the artwork by herself. And I really love her uh, art. And she's basically, she does a lot of like, she's mostly a photographer, I would say. Okay. She does some paintings too, but mostly photos. And... um, what really amazes me about her work is she doesn't do a lot of like Photoshop. So she tries to capture a picture in the raw material. And um, the shot of the cover shot is um, made uh, with a little light installation in um, in a hallway of our, um, in front of my studio actually. Oh. And uh, she did a double exposure. So she does... Like in analog terms, she did, I like she did two photos in on one film strip. Right. So it like it lays on top of each other, and uh, yeah, I I liked it because um, we you don't know how it will look like before you do it, you know. Yeah. Because you layer two pictures on top of each other. Right on the film before it's developed, yeah. and yeah, exactly. And uh, she she did, yeah, she did a great job. I really love it. And the vinyl is going to be a lot of more uh, artwork. So um, if you're curious about the artwork, buy the vinyl. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, yeah, the um, the canvas uh, at Spotify. She did this by herself too. And uh, for the song Purpose of a Grave, there's a fun story because we did this together and um, we did it in in our apartment uh, because we wanted to have like, it's uh, basically some hands buried in some dirt and um, the, the, the first picture is some dirt and then the hands come out of it and they lose each other, like, you know holding hands okay. and yeah it's like the you know the meaning behind the, the song and uh the connection to the grave 
and um, we wanted to do this outside, but it was winter, and it was a very cold winter this year, like last winter, and we couldn't do it. So because you know, first of all, it was super cold. Then it was snowing all the time, and we we're like, "Ah, oh, shit, we have to do the canvases." You know, release dates coming, and we have to do this. And then we decided to get some soil and do it in our flat. Okay. So we had like 80 <laughs> liters of soil <laughs> in our flat. And of course, it was like the cheapest soil, which stinks like shit. And it was like three days of our in our pipe oh, no. smelling like shit. And then we did it at night. And uh, after we did the shot, you know, we wrapped everything into a big plastic wrap. And uh, as we were carrying it downstairs... Um, my roommate pointed out that it might look weird to other people, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Just carrying a giant, carrying package, a giant package at 1 a.m. Down, uh, down the stairs. And I was like, yeah, okay. And this. then what do you got to go do? You got to dig a hole and fill it full of dirt because it's... <laughs> We, I, I thought we can just <laughs> throw it away, and uh, but it was too much, so we spread it out in our garden, which is basically just mud anyway, so uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hope nobody looks as we have shovels and we're digging holes mm -hmm. in the ground. In exactly. The of the winter, in the middle of the night. Purpose of a grave. <laughs> I love it. I love it, man. Um, so I, we did mention Spotify because of the Spotify canvas, but the, the album is available on Spotify now. Yeah. Uh, so people can go, how do they search for it? How do they find it? And then what other ways can people engage with you as an artist, with the album in general? And like, I mean, I know I, I would like to have a vinyl of this of when it course. comes out. How do of people, course. is there pre-sales? Like, what can we do? Do the 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 sales pitch stuff Okay, now. okay. <laughs> so the album is available on Apple Music, Amazon, like every common uh, streaming service. And you can find it uh, when you type in Akela, uh, A-K-E-L-A, and then the number one. And you can find me on Instagram as Akela one but there I use one as a word. Okay. So some people think my name is Akela One, but it's Akela One. <laughs> Akela One. <laughs> Akela One. Akela Eins, Akela One. I'm going to sell the vinyl um, on Bandcamp, and you can also like write me on Instagram, and I'm going to send you some copies. And um, I, yeah. That's that's I'm going to do this all by myself. You're gonna do it so, on your own. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. That's everything everything by myself. That was some, the challenge. I have some off the air questions for you about like shipping packages and uh, where you're getting where you're sourcing all your materials for pressing and stuff like that. But I don't think we need to bore listeners with yeah <laughs> technical details of where to buy a cardboard box. <laughs> and and then so what are you gonna do after this? Is there more? Are there, is there more music, or is there? Can you tour this stuff? Can you go out and play this stuff? For well, people? first of all, I don't think about touring because this it's not going to happen right right now. Right now, yeah, definitely. But gotcha. um, when everything you know, when the new normal is happening, I really want to try to play this live. But I'm going to think about it when it when's the time. And uh, I will, like, the feedback is so great, you know, it really motivated me to go on and I definitely going to um, do some more music in this kind of way. I don't know if it's going to be the same music, like, genre-wise, because I don't want to be, you know, a person who just does, does rock, so maybe next EP is going to be Wave, I don't know. Okay. I, I we'll see what happens. I know you're also a big jazz drummer, so maybe we get a jazz record out. Of I it. don't know. I I cannot say. I, I like. I would. I would love to be a great jazz drummer, but I'm not. <laughs> hey, you can still. You don't have to be great at everything. You know exactly. exactly. You can still enjoy I the love, shit out exactly. of it. Exactly. I love to play jazz, but it's like I'm not a jazz drummer. That would be unfair to all the good jazz drummers. <laughs> That's that's great, man. Well, uh, Vince Neck, a.k.a. Akela One, go listen to the new EP. I think you guys are going to like it if you enjoyed the songs that we have there uh, on earlier on the show. The EP is called Negative Nancy. Find it everywhere you find your music. Let's do a, a goodbye shot. Yes. Pass your cup over here. Of course. And we'll refill. I, I really thank you for taking the time to come in and be on the show and tell Thanks us the story. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. Uh, love to have you back if you do uh, more stuff. 
Of course. Um, cheers. All right. Cheers. And I'll just remind all the listeners out there, shot at that.com. If you want to hear more episodes of the show, connect on social media, anything at all like that. There's also a Patreon. So if you mm. feel like you want to be generous and uh, donate a little bit of support to the show, you can visit patreon.com slash shot at that and become a Patreon patron. Um, but honestly, save on to that money and don't give it to me and uh, give it to Akela One instead when you buy his new vinyl that's coming out. All right. Cheers, buddy. Thanks Cheers. for being on the show. Cheers.